people, right? They say one thing, you know, cancel culture comes after them, then Instagram bans them, Facebook bans them, YouTube bans them. Right. And it's just ridiculous, dude. But all it is, is just, I believe a failure to understand, you know, that like, as an example, when you look at that situation, your emotions are irrelevant, how you feel about that situation. The lion is still going to tackle the gazelle, whether you think he's a king or a toxic masculine, you know what I'm saying? I, that's, that's the, where I have an issue. It, it, if I were to come out and say I'm proud straight, straight rights, I'm a bad guy because that's anti-gay. I didn't say anything against gay. I just said I'm proud to be straight. What's the problem with that? If a white person says he's proud to be white, he's racist. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he hates blacks. He just said he's proud to be white. You could be proud to be black. You could be proud to be Hispanic. See, society, the narrative. <laughs> Welcome to Unified.TV, where truth has no fear. I'm here with Mr. Brian Casella, and in, in my humble opinion, he is a guru. And this is just me talking. Like, I'm sure others agree, but <laughs> definitely a guru. I mean, from real estate to insurance to anything you could think of, we're talking about a mastermind here. I've learned so much about business and how to uh, strive towards better success and be, you know, more efficient by watching videos and listening to everything this gentleman has to say so uh i definitely thank you so much for your time it, it's it's very valuable to me for you to cut out your time for me so uh thank you so much for being here i appreciate you man thanks for having me you know i, I think uh this needs to be done more you know I'm, I'm happy to support you know and i love to see other people do their thing and create podcasts and put stuff out um i think that's ultimately what's going to change the world you know yeah i appreciate that especially with this particular topic we you posted a video <clears throat> recently on YouTube. I, did it make its way to Instagram or was it just YouTube? I think it was. I know for sure it was YouTube. For now, it's on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to end up posting it on Instagram, too. I've been getting censored so much, though. Um, yeah. I'm even having trouble now posting stories because there's certain, I think they have like a bot on me that if in a story that I post certain words are said, it automatically like flags the video. And when I try to post it, it just automatically fails. And I've been having a lot of issues on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as well. And it, it kind of sucks. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe I might have to, you know, change some of the words in it. But, um, you know, it's, it's interesting what's happening. But uh, it's only on YouTube now, for now. Who knows if they'll take it off or not. But uh, I try to and keep you, it. Did is. you want to let everyone know how to find it? Because I, I, the title escapes me. But I know it's on your Brian Casella YouTube channel. Yeah, I did too. I think it was the biggest problems with men today and the biggest problems with women today. I did part two for men like two days ago, three days ago. And then I did the first one for women that took off uh, last week. So I'm going to make that into a series and I'll probably do like four or five parts for each one. Okay. Well, we got it. You guys check it out for sure. Make sure you go check it out. It's definitely worth your time and it's all facts. Like his videos actually would inspire me to post my most recent or well, one of my most recent videos about how black women say they're overly sexualized. And if you guys watched that, which a lot of you did, this is where the inspiration came from, from Mr. Casella, because I, it's such a topic that men are afraid to speak on because they're looked at as being sexist and cavemen. But he also he also called out the men and, and what men are doing wrong. So it wasn't at all sexist. It was real. And it's a topic that is not dissected enough. And as we know now, uh, you know, the men and women are in society in much different ways than what was back in the day. And we're not fulfilling our place. And, and you know, so now it, it I know you said you have a book coming. Were you covering this topic or just covering general things? Because this definitely could be a book. This could be a handbook for, <laughs> for men and women. I may touch on the subject, but the particular book that I'm going to do is probably going to be more general. And I have a few that I'm going to do, right? I'm going to get to work on that one once I'm settled in here because I just moved to uh, Miami from California and I'm not settled in yet, right? Like this uh, background I have, I'm in a condo right now, temporarily like a short-term rental. I'm closing escrow on my house next week. Then once I'm settled in, you know, I can get back into my normal rhythm, but um, it, it's just an important topic, man, because I will more than likely do a book on it. But like what, what people fail to realize is we, we need to understand like the two planes of existence. We have like, uh, if we're going to call it nature, right? You look at the animal kingdom, 
that is what it is. We can, as humans, see like a lion tackling, I don't know, a gazelle and be like, oh, that's so wrong. The lion shouldn't harm the, the gazelle. That's nature, dude. It, it is. Whatever right. that code was, you know, you can blame whatever you believe in God, the universe, like that, that. That's just what it is. But we have this separate element now, which is, you know, the, the human plane of existence, what society deems as right and wrong, right? And we try to define or intervene with that nature's code and law with our own interpretation. And those are two separate entities and people don't see that and they fail to recognize it. And what we see happening in society is they wanna blur those lines or look at nature and say, no, that's wrong. And you can't right. do that. And that's one of the main principles and reasons that I believe society is suffering because they'll look at like the lion tackling the gazelle and they'll make an argument that the lion is an asshole and he's a toxic masculine and all that stuff, right? Like it just, it, right. it gets out of hand. And then if you say something, your, your cancel culture comes after you. Like they still try to come after me, but luckily at this point now, I have like a huge following in a sense that backs me up. So we put some resistance up, but for most people, right? They say one thing, you know, cancel culture comes after them, then Instagram bans them, Facebook bans them, YouTube bans them. Right. And it's just ridiculous, dude. But all it is, is just, I believe a failure to understand, you know, that like, as an example, when you look at that situation, your emotions are irrelevant, how you feel about that situation. The lion is still going to tackle the gazelle, whether you think he's a king or a toxic masculine, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, that, that that's just one of those things that, I think people need to study, right? So when we look at the dynamic of men and women, you know, uh, as an example, what you brought up in your video, right? I didn't catch the whole thing, but you brought the the, the whole sexualizing part, right? They'll, they'll do an OnlyFans and show the, their ass and tits and then be like, oh, don't judge me for it. It's like, dude, you just showed it to the world. What do you expect, right? Exactly. That, and that's something right. primal too. Like we could be out, a beautiful woman walks by, even if we don't talk to her, we're still going to look or at the minimum as a man, we're aware where she's at all the time. Right. So if we go to a party or a gathering and there's like a, a what we deem as like a 10 beautiful, right? Like the ideal woman for us, even if we're looking the other way, we're going to know that she's like right there over our right shoulder. Right. And we'll, right. Even do, we'll do stupid things to like, oh, we'll drop our fork and then like look real quick. You know what I mean? And, and there's nothing wrong with that because I'm not saying you can go and just grab the girl and then, you know, pick her up and take her. But we're still going to be aware of her and we're still going to be like attracted to her. Right. Right. And again, that's what people don't understand, but they'll try to say, oh, you can't do that. Or, oh, you can't judge me for putting my boobs out. It's like, you're, you're now trying to blur the line between what I, what I said earlier society says and what that code is. And right. again, unless this is taught in the classroom, nothing's ever going to change. And that's why we're seeing society go the way that it's going. What's the divorce rate? 60, 70%, right? right. We, 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 we try to impose our human code on something like this, and it's just never going to work. And the more that they try to like pass legislation and try to blur these lines, it's going to get worse. I mean, look at the state right now of men and women. Women are trying to be men and men are trying to be women. It's crazy, right? Yes. Our food, our food is chemically polluted, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, look at all the, a lot of the stars that are pushed that, that are men. They're exhibiting more and more feminine qualities, right? Yes. We're told not to lead and step down and let the woman take charge. Well, the divorce rate is alone enough. And the huge failure of relationships is enough to tell me that that dynamic is off, right? For sure. Right. I see people around me suffering, bro. I'm sure you do too in their relationships. Men want to step up and then they're shamed for stepping up, right? We're wrong for saying, hey, we should lead in a relationship, right? And but I'll ask any woman on the street, do you want a man who, who is decisive and moves or do you want a man who's a pussy? And they'll all tell me, I want a decisive man who moves, right? And, and that's just what it is. But even on the surface, if they say, well, I want the nice guy who's going to, you know, do this and do that. When you look at their actions, their right. actions tell you something else. Their actions mm -hmm. tell you something else. So, I mean, we can open up this topic, you know, as much as you want, man. But when I look and I observe the world around me, it's suffering and things are backwards. Yet people will say different things and it just doesn't line up. Right. So I'm grabbing my charger, but I hear you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> no, but you're, <clears throat> you're a thousand percent correct. And you, you're actually speaking exactly what I've been speaking about. At least not my most recent video, but generally, um, I do believe that <clears throat> society is shaping and catering to a nation of women who should plan to do it themselves, 
who's your plan to say, I don't need a man. Okay, that's fine to feel like you don't need one. But now you're being nurtured into a mindset of not even wanting one. Now you want to date your best friend, female best friend. And now you want to <clears throat> be more into girls. And, you know, I know I know that you were saying that the, the divorce rate is 60 to 70 percent. And I'm looking at how toxic same sex relationships are uh, when it comes to domestic violence, when it comes to uh, suicide rates, when it comes to same sex relationships. So if you couple that with um, same sex marriage, I can imagine what the percentages of divorce, how much higher they are. And this is not I'm not bashing uh, anyone that's gay. It's just that we're promoting it now rather than having someone make a decision to live a certain lifestyle, we're putting it in children's cartoons where networks are changing their logos to rainbows to cater to the gay audience. It's like, do you have to do that? Do you have to push this? If you want to live your life your way, that's your business. But why should we be forced to accept it? Why, why should we have to think it's okay? Like I, that's, that's the, where I have an issue. It, it if I were to come out and say I'm proud straight, straight rights, I'm a bad guy because that's anti-gay. I didn't say anything against gay. I just said I'm proud to be straight. What's the problem with that? If a white person says he's proud to be white, he's racist. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he hates blacks. He just said he's proud to be white. You could be proud to be black. You could be proud to be Hispanic. See, society, the narratives, the narratives, the media, all this stuff, is it's so poisonous to where people can't even be normal anymore, you know, or what or what is considered normal. So this particular topic um, needs to be talked about more, just like you said. It needs to be dissected. It needs to be on T-shirts. It, it needs to be everywhere. Yeah, and it's observably true, you know? And you know, back to what you said, dude, it, it's nuts. I mean, I look at even recently, I think I shared it on my Instagram, Usain Bolt, right, had two uh, twins. He had two boys. Right. And he just announced it on Father's Day. Hey, I've been holding back, but I wanted to announce that, hey, I just had these two beautiful sons. And I see a bunch of crybabies in the comment section. Oh, how dare he misgender his sons and this and that. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? The dude had two children and their sons. And you want to say that those newborn babies are going to choose their gender? Right. Right. They're still eating their boogers and sucking their thumb. You know what I mean? And what you described too, they're pushing it in school. I think I right. saw somewhere like in New York and California in the curriculum, as soon as like preschool and kindergarten, they're trying to introduce like uh, how to teach kids how to like masturbate, talking to them about all the like the 43 genders. I mean, I don't know, bro. Are you keeping up uh, every day? There's more. I think there's like 75 now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 just, it just blows my mind, dude, how this is being introduced into curriculums for kids. My friend, one of my good friends was just in Orlando at Disney, and he was sending me videos of like the shop. Half of the clothes there or more, like even Mickey's ears has like the flag now, the, the LGBT flag, right? Right. And all this other stuff, the shirt, like everything has at least a splash of this agenda, right? And you, and you said it best. What, what's happening now is if I come out, and say, live your life. If you're gay, trans, like, I don't care. I believe everybody does have the right to live how they want. But if I say I don't support it, I'm the bad guy, right? Right. And to the, to the person listening, I cannot support something and still be okay with it. I'm just not clapping for it or cheering for it. I'm just, hey, you go that way, I'll go this way, but we can both happily coexist. You get what I'm saying? But how come now if I don't scream and cheer for you, I'm your enemy or I'm toxic or I'm bad. That's what's happening. Instead it's of them just playing on their playground and living their lives, we have to openly cheer for them and be in the stands. Otherwise we're against them. Right. Right. And you said it, it's the narrative that's being pushed. And that kind of group think is being pushed so much. The interesting part, bro, is I have a lot of friends who are, who are gay, right. LGBT and all that. The majority isn't thinking that way. It's a small percentage but because they bark and scream so loud, the public believes that that's the majority. You know, even going back to, um, you know, uh, elections and, and, and voting, if I know, as an example, 10 gay people, seven or eight of them that I know voted against all that stuff and they're not for it. And there was maybe one or two who voted for all these other crazy policies, right, that we're talking about. But to the public, they think, oh, man, every LGBT person is like this. Every gay person is like this, right? Every lesbian's this way. So in essence... 
now we're creating a bigger divide between these communities and people are looking at them like, man, these people are dangerous when they're really not. It's that small percentage. So the narrative being pushed is just so backwards and twisted. And I just saw a statistic, dude. I think it said that 30% of the people in the United States still believe the media and what they say. That's nuts, bro. Especially over the last year or two with all the, right. the proven fake narratives that they've pushed about certain things and organizations and agendas. The fact that one out of three people in this country still believes the media, bro, blows my mind. It really does. So if I, if I go out on the news and say, hey, anonymous source says that anybody who lives in Florida is a racist, three out of 10 people will believe it. Yeah, I, I don't even know, bro. I feel like I'm in a movie, you know? Yeah, it's annoying. I'm, I don't like people who are media driven. We, uh, I can try to <clears throat> bring, bring you to some light and let you know that what you're seeing there is not real. But if you choose to remain ignorant, I can't help you. And I'm probably not going to deal with you anymore. Like what I hate are the ones who are fed their fears by the media and all their BS by the media. But when the truth start coming out in that same media network, that part, you don't want to hear that part, that part you completely missed. That part just went past your ears. But you were ready to believe the fear factor, but you're not ready to believe the, re the when things are revealed to have been lies. Those are the people I cannot even, I can't even talk to those people. It's like, that's your trusted media. That's the media you built your life around. Now, now that everything's on front street, oh, that's not true. They're just saying that. Well, well they were just saying that too, but you believe that. And so we, we're in a very dangerous time in society. And that's why it takes regular people uh because we can't always trust what's going even if it's people we have grown to trust you can become compromised at some point so it's going to take local level people uh people like me with no name to talk to people like you who are doing big things and you already have a name for yourself and you're hitting the ground you've been hitting the ground running you're doing amazing things i have a lot of like tremendous respect for you and it takes for regular guys like me to talk to people like you because a lot of people don't know you and I definitely guarantee that people that you know don't know me. I guarantee that. So you're never going to reach 100% of everybody. Yeah. So I have a different audience um, than you have. So I can bring your truths to, to, to my side, my viewers, because it, you can never have enough truth. And so what you have to offer, you, can do, you are going to do damage to the people who watch this and listen to this. Um, just because your delivery is just raw and real. You're not trying to sugarcoat anything. We don't need another politician on TV trying to kiss babies and, <laughs> and uh, 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 you know, be politically correct. We need raw and real. And that's what yep. you bring. And that's why I have tremendous respect for you. So I, how do you suggest if you say you did run for office, right? I'm going to put you <laughs> in a, uh, I'm going to put the politician hat on you. Or if you yep. want to identify as a politician, whatever. Um, if you were to run, right? How would you go about doing away with some of this crap, you know, undoing some of this damage? What would you put into place? Man, they're so well-funded and corrupt at the same time. That would be a very, uh, it would be like fighting, like Hercules fighting the three-headed uh, serpent. You know what I mean? Like right. you cut one head off and two more grow. Um, you, you said it right, man. There's one word that you said, local, right? You got to start at the local level. And that's what I did, even when it comes to some of these philosophies or even my business savvy and, and me, you know, building my empire, I started local. I started talking to people, you know, at local boards, uh, you know, of um, the Department of Real Estate, right? Different places. I went to, you know, car companies and, and help people with car sales, every kind of business locally in LA. Even when I started doing stuff on social media, I hyper-focused on LA and the surrounding area. Then from there, it, you know, it blew up. So in regards to some of these things, we need people in power um, at the local level, because if we can start making change at the state level and local level at the community level, then that effect will you know, that trickle down effect will happen, then eventually we can spearhead change into the state, full state level, nationwide level. And that's really how you would have to do it. But it requires the foot soldiers. And nowadays with social media, you know, um, it does facilitate it in a sense, because even though if you don't have a big audience, if there's enough people repeating the same message, that's how we create change. Now, what's happening is it's the opposite. Like I said earlier, I believe an issue that we have is a lot of people pushing these crazy nut job agendas they're a lot louder than the average person in our community that oppose that while we sit back and we're like, Oh, that's stupid. They're out there 
protesting, they're out there talking, they're out there getting people voted into local, you know, power positions. And that's how they can push this legislation without us doing anything about it. Right. Right. I see a lot of people running at the local level in California and New York, trying to take out these huge, um, these huge people, but they're so well funded and they have already such an overwhelming majority, it's difficult for them. So we're going to have to start at the local level and it requires everybody, like every single person. Because yeah. even if you create a podcast and you have 20 listeners, imagine if everybody did that and we all repeated that same message, we would yeah. overwhelm the other side and they wouldn't be able to help, but actually, you know, listen to us, number one, but number two, we would even the playing field. And that's really what it is. And we're going to have to do it. And it's hard because even for me doing my stuff, whether it's business or this, nobody listened to me for the first year, two, three years. Then it started growing. Then I started getting support. But we stand with the truth. And that ultimately is what's going to win. Now, if people don't want to see that or refuse to see it, that's okay. But the truth will always win, right? I, I yeah. put a post on Facebook recently. I said, uh, truth and ideas are bulletproof, Right. So I can speak, 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 speak and put stuff out. Let's say tomorrow I'm gone for whatever reason, an alien comes down and scoops me up and I'm off the planet. All my stuff has still stayed and people can share it and people can echo that message right. through the end of time, right? But if we're that big enough in force and we're not the minority in this, we're the majority. Most people, bro, think like us. They do, but they're not speaking up enough and that's the issue. So right. if more people are vocal about it and other people that are out see other people that are on social media see it and hear it. Now, now they're going to feel more comfortable to voice it themselves and be like, oh, yeah, I agree with that, right? And they're going to join us on this march if we're going to call it that. But that's what it requires, getting into uh, positions at the local level, community level, and then everybody echoing that. Um, it does require some effort, right? And you're going to deal with some criticism, of course, because we always do. I mean, yeah. I know I have. If I showed people yeah. the amount of hate text messages and, and DMs and voicemails and calls and comments on YouTube and trolls, they would just be like, wow, why do you keep doing this? But for me, it's, it's more important to push this stuff than deal with these, these idiots that, you know, try to cancel me. Right. And they've done crazy stuff, man. They've tried to get me fired from my real estate company. Right. They've, they've wow. gone pretty far to try to stop me. Right. They, they, they really have. And I know they're not going to stop, but it's okay. Right. I, I've been, you know, demonetized on YouTube before right? They've shadow banned me on Instagram and Facebook. I've been banned from going live before on Instagram and Facebook for like a month or two at a time. I mean, it's, it's wild, bro. But we have to be willing to go through that to create the change. Otherwise, we let them inch forward more and more and more until we're not going to be able to do anything about it. And these crazy policies are what's going to take over. You're exactly right. And that reminds me what, what it was someone on the news, they were saying that, um, that a lot of the people on the right are starting to self-censor because they don't want their page to get taken down. They don't want to be demonetized and all that kind of stuff. They don't want to be shadow banned. Um, and that's what they want you to do. When, when the big purge happened on Instagram last year and they shut down a bunch of conservative pages, mm -hmm. uh, some people never got them back. And then when they yep. did get them back, they said, forget it. I'm going to shut it down. I don't need it. Well, now you're playing into their hands. Yep. Um, their agenda is silence. That's why. That's why I believe. That's what I believe. The masks were all about. It wasn't about safety. And they they know they don't work. It was about keeping you silent, having yep. you shut up. They they know when people start talking, knowledge starts passing, and and eventually we're going to come from under this crap, which most people found their boldness, eventually. But if we had found our boldness last year, things wouldn't have carried on as long as they did. Now they still would have pushed their agenda, but we would have been awake, well well before now. Uh, but yeah, if you self censor, if you tone down your content as opposed uh, to, to appease the, the, the guidelines and to, you know, uh, keep from being shut down. You're, you're doing it wrong. That's what they want you to do because they know that well, now that there's laws passed where you can sue Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure how much Facebook is still censoring, but they're going to do enough. They're going to do their part and make sure they censor as much as they can within the legal guidelines or whatever, but you can sue them now and I'm going to play that card. I'm waiting for them to get me. I, I'm going to have a new car in a minute if they do that. So <laughs> I want Absolutely. them to get me. And so my thing is like, if we shut ourselves down, we're giving them, we're giving them our power. They can't take anything from us. We have to give it to them. And I'm not going to do that. I've done that enough. I'm 33 years old and I've, I've been lied to my entire life by our government and history books and everything like that. Um, and now that I know, I can't unlearn what I know. And now I got to do something about it as much as I can. So that's why I ask people like you <clears throat> and whoever else is willing to talk to me, 
what are your thoughts? How do we go about this? And I, I share some of my ideas and maybe we can get together on a few things and we can try to do something about this. But like you said, it's going to take somebody opening their mouth and not being scared. And it's going to take people that are willing to speak other people's thoughts because some people aren't willing to do what we're doing. Uh, I don't care. I don't care. I, I, I firmly believe this is what my purpose is. And is, if you're walking in your purpose, uh, you can't worry about risk. You have to take whatever comes with it. And that's where I'm at now. Uh, so if, and so you say you're out there in Florida, I know that you, you have a great governor out there, but what is the, what is the energy like? I know in Austin and Texas is straight liberal. What is the majority of Florida? Like, is it ma- mostly red or do you deal with some, a lot of liberalism out there too? Um, it, I would say it's mostly red, you know, I'm, I'm in Miami and I'm sure Miami's probably split down the middle because it just depends like where you're at. But even now, like I go out and you don't have to wear a mask here, but a good chunk of people still wear their mask. But the difference is like in California, everybody looks at you like, you know, you're crazy if you don't have a mask on and they'll stop if you're walking and say, put your mask on, right? Like they're crazy out here. Everybody just minds their own business. So the vibe and the energy is much better. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's a completely different world out here. And anytime I'm at the beach or walking around and I hear somebody complaining, I know they're a tourist and I know they're not from here because the locals aren't like that for the most part. You might have a couple crazies here and there, but the, the state here is just completely different. And the funny thing is I've talked to a few people about it, you know, that, that complain. I'm like, dude, you're complaining, but you're here in Florida right now. Why are you here? <laughs> Why did you come here to the state of Florida? If you're complaining. So in one breath, you're complaining about the governor and how the state's doing things, but you came here to vacation and you don't have a mask on, yet you're complaining about it. I see hypocrisy there, you know? Yeah, you should have gone to California. You've been right at home. Exactly, you know? So it's crazy. But overall, man, uh, the move was incredible. I should have moved here sooner. You know, COVID for me was just a nail in the coffin because I was planning on leaving California anyway. But uh, I just have nothing but good things to say about the governor here in, in the state of Florida. I don't see myself leaving anytime soon, bro, at all. I'm glad I, I need to visit. I need to put that on my bucket list to visit uh, to visit Florida for sure, especially now. Before it was Florida, man, people in Florida are crazy. And so it wasn't appealing. But uh, with with the work DeSantis has done and then uh, I'm not sure about Matt Gates. We're still trying to sort that out. I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on with that. I don't know. Yeah. So besides. DeSantis and possibly Gates. There's a few other politicians in um, in Florida that's been doing a great job at um, making life livable out there. And so I'm definitely need I definitely need to visit. Um, but you know, so you're in Miami, so I know for sure you have a lot of material <laughs> when it comes to the videos where you were calling the women out, calling the men out. I know you have a lot of material in Miami because I've seen some of the videos and photos. And I know that clothes are definitely an option out there. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. how do you deal with that? Now, I, I don't want to get into your relationship business, but if you're single or if you're with someone, um, how do you deal with that? If you say you're single, right? Mm-hmm. You have the mindset you have, which I applaud a thousand percent. We're on the same page. Mm-hmm. How does that play into dating life? I mean, I'm sure it makes it a little harder because you're not a fan of women acting a certain way. Yeah. And since you are a man of integrity, you're not going to act a certain way. So. How does that play into your dating life where you find someone like-minded that understands your viewpoint and respects it? Well, a lot of times, you know, um, I think people in relationships, they're, 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 there's a lot, right? There's many like levels to this, right? Like first thing is like everyone in their life has been betrayed, especially in a relationship. Everybody has, right? So because they've been betrayed, men and women, moving forward, instead of accepting the fact that they're going to be betrayed, because for you to trust somebody and say, okay, I trust you, you have to already accept the fact that at some point you're going to be betrayed, right? They're two sides of the same coin, okay? There's no perfect relationship. There's no perfect person, man or woman. It's going to happen. So already people are holding back in a relationship. And that's what also feeds into the behavior of being afraid to be honest and transparent up front. So in my case, if I'm going to pursue a relationship with a woman in this example, I'm going to lay it all out in the beginning before we even begin, right? Because I need to make sure that we're a good fit for each other. I will never force a man or a woman to 100% abide by my philosophy, right? Because we're all free thinking and living human beings. I can make my argument a sound, logical argument about everything that I present and bring to the table for the dynamic of a relationship, but they don't have to accept it. You get what I'm saying? So so when I come to the table, we have to agree because ultimately we're two consenting adults. 
And if we bring everything to the table and we're like, hey, okay, this is going to be the parameters of the relationship, right? And we agree on everything. Cool. But you're right. Most women, because they've had something else, the media, their favorite celebrity crush whispering in their ear about how they're supposed to be, they're not going to agree with it. But I'm okay with that, right? I'm not going to compromise myself to be in that relationship. And what? why do guys do it a lot of times? Because they just want to get laid and they'll lie and scheme you know, and, and be dishonest for that. Like a lot of guys are going out, right? They're lying to their girlfriend and saying, I love you. And I'm just with you. And they're out running around with three or four different girls. When I tell those same men, bro, if you want to be with five chicks, just be open about it. And when you get with the girls say, I'm with other girls right now, and it's going to stay that way. So if we move forward together, you need to know that you don't have to accept it. And we can stop now. But if we move forward, you need to know that I'm with other women. Do that. Right. See, that takes character. It takes balls. And it takes a real man to do that. Now, I can deal with the argument from a woman saying, well, a real man's not going to be with multiple women. That's a separate conversation, right? But you can't look at that man and say he's being dishonest because he told you what it was from day one and you knew right. what it was. And right. it's very difficult nowadays, especially in this society, to find a man who's going to be honest with you as a woman. And I guarantee you, every woman listening to this is going to say facts because they've been lied right. to a million times by men, right? Yeah. So that's what it is. So I'm very, I almost treat in a sense, even though people complain about it, I treat a relationship almost like a business. I want to nurture it. I want to make it better. I want us to have standards. I don't want to be that relationship where we get together, then we both get lazy and fat and we don't care about each other. And then me and you were hanging out and I'm complaining about my girl or my wife. Oh man, the ball and chain, bro. Like she's driving me crazy. I don't want to be in that type of relationship. I want a relationship right, right. to get stronger and better. I want you to get better and I want to get better. So yeah. me being a man, I hold myself to that standard. I'm supposed to be an example. I'm supposed to help my woman and help build her and make her better, right? That's the type of responsibility that I take. I need to be decisive. I need to be the leader, right? I need to be the tip of the spear because I'm that male energy. I'm the manifestation of it. And I need to act and be as such. I fully accept that responsibility. Also protecting my woman and making her feel safe. I accept that, which is why I know how to fight. I can teach her how to fight, right? right. And I have guns too, in case somebody breaks in. So while the average person is, a, is afraid of somebody breaking into the house, I say, I feel bad if somebody breaks into my house. I feel bad for that person because they're going to get fucked up. Right? Right, right, so right. It's different, but you have to be able to carry this energy and walk with it and then actually live up to it. That's the difference, bro. So a lot of women, when they get around the right man, they'll act like a woman. They just need to get around an actual man. That's the difference because a, a woman will say, well, I, I don't feel comfortable. Like when we bring up, you know, like a, in a relationship, right? Like as an example, I want in the relationship dynamic, right? In intimacy and all that. I want a woman who will be submissive with me. I don't want a woman who's going to fight with me. Right. And right. we've been demonized to say that. I'm not saying they're submissive to the world and they're, and they're weak. No, but in our relationship, yes, if I'm being that man, I want a woman like that. Now, when she's on her own doing her business, I want her to be strong and confident, of course. But with me, I want her submissive. I have no problem saying that. Now, right. the funny thing is when I get around all these females that claim they're alpha and bark, when I come around, they start acting like a woman. And I tell them, why are you acting like a lady now? It's because I'm around, right? right. And, and you naturally will fall into that role when the right man is around. That's the difference right? Look exactly. at you on Instagram and look at our interaction in the last 10 minutes. You haven't been acting all loud and barking, right? But when these other weak men come around, you'll bark because you know exactly. you're supposed to do that around the weak man. So again, right. I live and see these things by observation, bro. I don't just make this stuff up. So the same woman also who would tell me I want to be independent and all that when I ask about her relationship in private and we talk, they tell me they're miserable because they're like, oh, man, my man, I, I run the relationship and I really don't want that. I mean, it's cool. But at the end of the day, I want a man to take control. They tell me this in private conversations. But then I see them on their Instagram and they're telling the women, you should be running the show. You should be wearing the pants. And then I talk to them. I say, why do you do that, dude? Because you, you, you don't believe that. But they think they have to fit that role because that's what society's telling them. Right. right. I think they're supposed to demonstrate that because it's cool and it's going to get likes and all that stuff when deep down inside, bro, they're suffering and they're not happy, but they don't want to have that conversation. And because social media is the highlights, right? They don't want to show the world that they're hurting right now, that they're not happy in their relationship and that they're suffering because they, they can't handle that. So they have to show the world, you know, the version of them with the makeup on and looking perfect. That's the difference, man. But, um, I just think, 
it requires people to be upfront, honest, transparent, and it requires the proper dynamic to be in place. And when you have an actual woman and an actual man, it'll work and they'll be happy. But at the end of the day, I say, if you're two consenting adults, technically, you can run a relationship however the hell you want. That's just my viewpoint of doing it. Right. You, you, you are exactly right. And you actually hit on uh, the exact phrase that I use, putting everything on the table. <clears throat> I believe that when you first get with someone, you, now I, I, I do think that you should hold back in some way, in some ways, but when it comes to who you are, what you expect, what you're not going to do, what you are going to do, how you live your life, the quicker you know about someone and what they stand for and what they do, the easier it is for both of you. Put everything on the table. Say, look, uh, I say, okay, I don't serve God or I do serve God or yeah, they don't, I don't smoke weed. Never put that in front of me or I don't get drunk. Whatever, whatever you believe in, whatever you don't believe in, say it right then and there. Because those things, if that person decides to accept that and then that, later on it becomes a problem, they're a hypocrite. I told you what it was from the beginning. Now, all of a sudden, the fact that I don't drink, the fact that I don't smoke or I smoke 10 times a day, now you want to use that against me. No, you signed up for this. I told you from the beginning, this is what I do. This is what I don't do. Perfect example. I was with a girl for oh, a year or two. I forget. This one, I don't know how long we were together. <clears throat> I told her when we first got together because she told me she liked the party. I said, look, I don't do the nightlife. I'm not into that. It gets wild. If I told her straight up, you're a grown woman. If you go out there and get drunk and you can't control yourself, don't call me because you're grown. You got to know your limits. You can't be out there putting yourself in a situation. I got to come rescue you at two in the morning, put myself in risk because you don't know how to act. Don't call me. So one day it was like two, one or two in the morning, just like I said, and I was sleeping and she calls me and she, and she tried to pretend like she wasn't drunk, but I could tell she was when she, I could hear a, a loud noise after being on the phone for a few minutes. I heard a loud noise. I said, what happened? She said, I fell off the couch. I said, how'd you fall off the couch? And I wanted her to tell me she was drunk. I already knew because I knew her. I wanted her to say it because when I hang up on her, I want her to know exactly why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so she was like, I fell off the couch. And um, I said, well, how'd you fall off the couch? I, 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 I said, you've been drinking, huh? Are you drunk right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm drunk. And, and some guy named Berto, some weird name. I don't know. He was an idiot. He's here and he's trying to get some. And I'm worried that he's going to try to take advantage of me. I said, what? I said, Berto, the same guy that has a problem with us being together in the first place, you were over there getting drunk with him? I was like, I'm good. I hung up on her. Turned my phone off and everything. The next morning, I finally turned my phone on. <laughs> I mean, my voicemail, text, everything is filled. <clears throat> and when I called her back, when I felt like I called her back later in the day, I said, what's the deal? How you, how you, how you been? <laughs> so she's like, I can't believe you left me in that situation. I can't believe you left me there. I could have got taken advantage of. I said, whose fault is that? I told you from the beginning, I do not do drunk women. Whether I'm with you, if I'm with you, I'm leaving you where you are. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. That, that's embarrassing to me. You should know your limits. I, yep. That's just me. If we're on the phone, I'm going to hang up on you. And I'm not coming to get you. And I told her that from the beginning. And I told her that. I said, remember I told you that, right? Yeah. I said, well, I, I mean what I say. I'm done. I can, I'm not going to do that. For all I know, she gave him some. She, I, I, I would never know the truth. But why would you be over there drinking with a guy you know already wants to get in your pants? Mm -hmm. So... That right there goes back to what we were talking about before. The situations that women put themselves in and then you expect respect. You have to show yourself respectable first. It yeah. doesn't work like that. Like Just like men have to compete for you, you got to compete for us too. It goes both ways. What are you bringing to the table? Why should I trust you? Sell me on you. Just like I have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not happening. They think dudes have to bend over backwards and empty their bank account. Yep. For what? Just because you got that thing between your legs, that don't mean I should enter my bank account. I can get that from anywhere. Why, why is yours so special? What's so special about you? But we can't have these conversations because we're supposed to be the ones that do everything and they're supposed to be able to make the choice. I have a choice too. And, and <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know. Society is flipped. Uh, you got these alpha females and uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> so, alpha, alpha in quotes. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So I had to, the last question. Because I was really wanting to know this, and I and I watched most of the video. I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to finish the one. You were actually tying it into how it how it goes and how it plays into the workplace. So mm -hmm. with everything we talked about, with the with the roles of men and women, how each side needs to show themselves to fulfill their fulfill their actual roles and not mm -hmm. do any more any less. Um, how does that play into the workplace? Because you're super 
I, I would say super professional. You got a lot of like corporate stuff going on. Mm-hmm. How does that play into how you conduct business and how you train your employees mm-hmm. um, to be efficient? Because I, I watched the video where you went through questions. Like I think it was for real estate is what it was. Someone was trying to sell a house and you gave the lady, I can't remember her name, you gave her examples of rebuttals and she had a comeback for every one of them every single one of them and she's nice to look at so i imagine that her smarts and her looks she's killing it yeah how do you work your training yeah so efficiently where you can also maybe not openly include the the actual topics we talked about Mm -hmm. how do you make that work to where the women could be sexy but not laying on the counter in order to make a sale how does that work or do you include that and I think you're probably talking about Lloyda, my girlfriend, right? Yes. And she's a, she's oh, a I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Sorry. trained, well-oiled machine for sure. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I do talk about this stuff because, you know, when, as an example, there, there's going to be moments where maybe she is um, alone or with one of my associates and a situation like that occurs just like it does everywhere where a woman will be in front of a man, right. And being able to kind of juggle the femininity and the sexiness, but also being uh, and having the ability to put their foot down to say, Hey dude, like I'm nice to look at, but I'm not here for that. Right. Right. You do have to incorporate it because that it's, it's a natural part of the society. And as an example, right. We're, we're taught, Hey, you're never supposed to be mean. So imagine we're a beautiful girl. We go out. Well, when you're a beautiful girl and you go out, guys are trying to make conversation with you, right? It's, it's right. natural, right? They're attracted to you. You could be pumping gas. They're going to say, Hey, beautiful day, huh? right? They're going to say lame shit just to try to get a conversation with you. Now, if you're nice to everybody, the man's going to think, oh, I got a shot. I'm going to keep talking to her, right? Right. And she may not want to talk to the guy. She might be like, dude, get the hell away from me. But then they're taught you can't say that. I say, yes, you can say that. Tell him to leave you alone. Right. Say, get away from me or leave me alone. Not interested. Don't want to talk to you. You're not wrong for saying that. So I teach them both. I also teach them when they're uh, with their client selling. I'm like, if you're ever going to put on your masculine hat, that's when you put it on. You need to. Otherwise, people aren't going to take you serious. They're going to just think you're a pretty face that smells good. And they're just going to want you around. And they're not going to think, oh, this is business time. So from the moment you walk into how you shake their hand and how you present yourself and how you start leading the interaction, you need to say, hey, this is business. Not just out of your mouth, but every movement out of your body, every gesture needs to say, this is business. So 100%, bro, I I teach that stuff because that's always a subliminal and underlying communication. Whenever you put men and women together, the the subliminal communication of sex is always going to be a part of it, whether the dude and woman are 80 years old or 20 years old. It doesn't matter, right? And again, we're told to ignore that. Yet when you look at every fucking advertisement out there, there's always an underlying tone of sex. Look at anything from alcohol and marketing and all this other stuff. There's always sex being taught. Look at cartoons, mm-hmm. like when we watch The Simpsons, there's a ton of sex references in that. And that's supposed to be a, a, a eight-year-old, 10-year-old, you know, level to, to watch that cartoon. I remember watching it, being oblivious to sex when I was a kid and asking people, hey, what is that? And they're like, oh, it's like a sex reference. And I was like, what the hell is that? And they started explaining it to me. I was so young, I couldn't understand it, but they were still throwing it in there. So right. this stuff has to be talked about. But again, like you said earlier, we're made wrong for talking about it. We're told... Right. Oh, you're not supposed to discuss that. Dude, it, 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 it's a part of the game, right? It's a part of life. And we have to be able to, to balance both, you know, especially right. as a woman. Because like if they go out there and go door to door, I tell every woman, carry pepper spray with you. Don't ever walk into a house if somebody invites you. Just like my girlfriend, she's never alone. She either has me with her or somebody else that I trust 100% to be with her. And sometimes I might be another woman. But if there's two of them together, you know, now I know the risk goes down. Right? right. Same thing when she goes. I know where she's going, what time. She texts me when she gets there. She texts me in the middle of it, and she calls me or texts me at the end to let me know they're done. Those are the measures that I put in place to protect her, similar to the situation you said that your ex-girlfriend put herself in and then right. tries to call you for protection when you explicitly told her, do not do it. And it's for those situations that we say that, ladies. Right? Because now look at the predicament that you're in, and we're supposed to come in like Mr. You know, Captain, you know, White Knight. I'm supposed to come in and help you. You put right. yourself in that position. Right. Why should we bend over backwards now when we specifically warned you about it? But hey, mm-hmm. we're assholes for imposing that, right? We're we're misogynists, we're toxic masculine, we're too controlling, we're too dominant by giving them practical advice and practical parameters for the relationship. What do we right. know? Right. Well, and, well, and then if someone would hear what you said about 
your girlfriend <clears throat> texting you, let you know when she's there, when she leaves. A lot of women will have a problem with that. Oh, I'm not going to let a man keep tabs on me and keep tracking me. Well, it's not about <laughs> that. If you have an issue with that, your pride's in a way and you definitely need to be by yourself. There's nothing wrong with letting that person know, hey, from point A to point B, I'm good. Uh, I'm over here. I detoured. I added C to the route. Point A and point B are still coming, but I added a C there. I need to go over here. There's nothing wrong with that because if something goes wrong, you're going to need to know. Last play, last time she spoke to me, she said she was going here. It's, it's okay. That's called respect. Mm-hmm. It's not control at all, and she's definitely not weak for doing it. Like That's so rare nowadays. I, I was with a girl. I didn't hear from her for most of the day. Like, I didn't know if we had a relationship. I was like, okay, I can't do this. Like, dude, you can't even you can't even answer a text. I can understand a call, but you can get back to a text anytime you want. Mm-hmm. I know you looked at your phone at some point and you still didn't say anything. I'm good on that. I, I don't I don't do that. No, you can't even give me a couple seconds. Nah. nah. So I definitely like the fact that you put those parameters in place and she's still with you. So obviously it's okay. Both sides know what's going on and they say, cool, let's sign up for this. That's, that's not enough for that. Yeah. You know, they make the argument that I'm keeping tabs on them. I make the argument, I really care about you. How about that? I love right. you. I care about exactly. you. I want to make sure you're safe. That to me is is much more at the top than I'm trying to keep tabs. Why? Because exactly. you just said it. We agreed to this. I could even not even be in a relationship with the girl. But if we have like a lunch or something, I'll say, hey, text me when you get home. Just to make yeah. sure. That's just the way I am. But mm-hmm. in the same breath that that woman tells you, that same woman that says, oh, he's trying to keep tabs on me. If you ask her, do you want a man who protects you? She'll say yes. Exactly. She'll say yes. So what yeah. am I supposed to do? Like right. not be in, your, be in your business, but then, you know, watch with the telescope where you're at. Like, what the hell do you want me to do? You know what I mean? You can't have both. Right. Well, exactly right. Because if you, if you ever hear anyone, any woman talk about her dad, one of the main things a woman talked about her dad was he was protective. He was strong. He, he looked out for me. And so if you have those qualities in your dad that you admire, chances are the right woman will want those same qualities in her man. Mm-hmm. You want to feel safe. You want to know that we go somewhere like in a shady neighborhood or we're somewhere and some dude's drunk at a party and he tries to grab you. You need to know I will whoop his ass. It's not a fact that I can, I will. Yeah. There should be no question in your mind of your safety level when you're with me. So when I'm not with you, I'm going to at least try to instill, if you don't already know, I'm going to try to instill some tools in you to say, look, hey, when you're going there, make sure you look around because you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> it's about, like you said, it's about safety. I care about you. If I didn't give a shit, you can go where you want. I'll see you when you get home. That's, I'm not built that way either. So um, it's definitely a rarity nowadays. And, and, and I don't know why that. Well, we know why it's media, but <laughs> I don't know a lot. Of, I don't know why a lot of women sign up for that uh, because they definitely complain about it. But you, like, like I was saying before, you signed up for it. Yeah. And then I see like I just somebody shared with me. I, could, I couldn't take this series. I shared an article with me that some magazine release saying that men working out is uh they have to stop that because it's toxic masculinity <laughs> that term toxic masculinity is, is is such a ridiculous phrase oh my god uh, i hate that phrase i might make my next video on that <laughs> i hate that phrase it's so ridiculous bro it's like it's the dumbest thing ever man but you know it, it, that that's the clown show we're in right now that's 2021 man and everything on it social is. media the majority of it of what's being applauded and shared and accepted is that that ludicrous you know philosophy and way of being but those same people will complain that oh man times are weird right now and the world is divided it's like dude well it's your guys's philosophy that's creating that nothing else it, right exactly this didn't come out of nowhere and yeah. uh you know in order for it to be a philosophy it, it has to have had some history to it especially when you could sell someone else on the bullshit like that like the media does so well every day uh they create the issue and then they want to try to help you solve the issue i don't subscribe <laughs> so uh no uh so i definitely appreciate your time so what do you have coming you have any projects that you're willing to share that we should be looking out for uh any new posts that we should be looking out for more specifically <sighs> do you have a target date for your book because i'm definitely going to be one of the first ones to get it <laughs> Don't have a target date, man. But once I start, I think I'll be starting it within the next like one to two weeks. I believe from the moment I start, I'll be done writing it within 30 to 45 days. Um, so I, I, I will project now that it should be published by fourth quarter, like maybe October, November, December. But I want to shoot okay. for earlier. I want to shoot for in people's hands by October, maybe earlier. 
but for now, just to be safe, I'll say October. So a good three, four months away. Awesome. Well, I'll be ready because my birthday is November. It'd be a nice gift to myself. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I appreciate that. <clears throat> and uh, any other, anything that you wanted to uh, plug or anything um, that you wanted to shout out, call out, anything to, uh, any, um, any kind of awareness at all that you have on your mind? Yeah, I would just tell people, man, you know, learn, right? These topics don't come out of nowhere. You have to learn. You can't just continue being spoon fed what you learned in school and what you see on the media and thinking that it's true because it's not at least suffering. I mean, go back to men and women. What do we see in movies? The guy buying girls drinks and doing all this other stuff. It doesn't work, right? What we were taught in dating doesn't work. What we were taught about history is, is a lie. You know that, right? Oh, Everything yeah. we were taught is backwards, dude. I mean, uh, look at even if I, <laughs> I've been banned and had stuff deleted for promoting certain types of tea for people to make that are made from natural plants and being told that I'm promoting false information that's alternative medicine. So the natural plants that grow out of this planet isn't plants and natural medicine anymore. It's called alternative medicine. That right there wow. tells you how twisted this game is. So, I mean, it's just crazy. But wow. what happens is, and why people are so scared, is it, it will shatter their current paradigm in reality and they're not ready for it. So they'd rather stay in their bubble. And that's why people are so afraid to learn. Because when you find out that what you were taught for the last 20, 30, 30 years is a lie, sometimes you get upset. You know, you're like, man, what the hell? And you go through that phase of going like extreme kind of rebel and being mad and cursing everybody out because I went through it too. But you have to go through it. And the more people that do, the more that we'll be able to overturn a lot of this craziness that's going on. Otherwise, you're just being strung along like all the other sheep. It's sad. Yeah. I, I can't. Uh, that, yeah, I'm stuck. I, I, I'm stuck on the alternative medicine. I, I, that bothers me. Like you rather have the FDA, the FDA uh, shoving crap down your throat. It, something as simple, the last thing I'll say, something as simple as aspirin. If you read the back of it, the FDA says that they can't confirm the claims. on. We're talking about aspirin. Yep. They're not even willing to get behind aspirin. But we're going to trust them to put a vaccine out. Mm -hmm. What are we missing here? We can't. You, um, it, it, it's such a corrupt system. And it, it, it really pisses me off the stuff they're putting in food mm -hmm. why people caught they had why people gain cancer in the first place and why they still have it is the part of the fda part of the medical industry all the diseases and illnesses don't even have to be in place they're not treating people at hospitals they're keeping them sick so they can have return customers mm -hmm. that's a whole another topic and i would get heated just thinking about it it's just such right. a corrupt thing man and people aren't willing to see it it just bothers me but i don't know if you keep me around, maybe we'll come back and talk about that topic next. But <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> definitely appreciate your time, man. Uh, and we will definitely connect soon. And look out for this audio. It's going to be on my uh, podcast for sure. And the video has to go up. Uh, you can't just listen to a guy like Brian Casella. You got to see the energy. Like, it's just, you can't turn away. You got some really awesome energy. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's really, it's really catchy. But uh, we'll see you guys soon. Look out for the video on audio. And God bless. Oh, 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 oh,